Hello Facebook, Jackie Broman here, Monday morning for my usual um, quick um, legal information slot. Uh, I am trying a little microphone today to see if the sound picks up a little bit better. It's Wi-Fi to my phone, so we'll see how we go. Uh, let me know on some feedback on the sound, um, if it's cutting in and out still. So today I wanted to talk about um, the people and the organisations that you need to tell when someone passes away. So I suppose there's really three stages. There are the people who need to know immediately when someone passes. There are the people who, or organisations who need to know once the death certificate arrives and then once the administration of the estate actually starts happening, there's another set of organisations then um, that need more information. So I suppose it is um, not, it's about not getting overwhelmed and thinking there's more to do than there actually is um, because it's about timely information, not about um, just um, thinking that there's a million things to do within the first couple of weeks of someone passing away. So when someone passes away, um, hopefully the family knows where the will is um, and that there's been some discussion already and they know who the executors are. But in some circumstances, um, people don't know where the will is, so they have to go through the documents in the deceased person's house and see if they can discover a copy of a will. On the copy of the will, there's usually solicitor's details, so you get in touch with that solicitor, see if there's a later will or if that's the one they hold. Um, if you're not the executor, find out potentially who is, particularly if there's a later will. Now, a solicitor won't release a will until there is proof of death as well. Um, so generally the death certificate's best, but you quite often get an interim death certificate or even the medical certificate that the um, hospital does and forwards onto births, deaths and marriages will suffice. So I suppose that's from the legal perspective, um, but otherwise the family needs to know um, within reason if there's people that the deceased person didn't want to know then that's respect their wishes um, also you once someone passes away you fairly soon need to choose who the funeral director is now again if you don't know if there's a prepaid funeral you're going to have to go through the paperwork at the deceased's um, place of residence because if you nominate a funeral director where um, the person hasn't already arranged something and then you later find out that they have arranged a funeral, you have to pay for the transport of the body from one funeral director to another. So best to know where to send the body, you know, within a day or two of the person having passed away. So I suppose that's the immediate stuff. In relative terms, there's not that much that you need to do immediately. Births, deaths and marriages will generally notify Centrelink and um, DBA, so you generally don't have to do that. Um, if you've got power of attorney, the power of attorney ceases, but I generally tell people, look, take out some um, cash and just keep an accounting record of what you use and you can pay it back in later if there's any immediate expenses. The only major immediate, immediate expense will be the funeral expenses. So usually you can take the invoice from the funeral director to the bank and they'll pay that directly. So you don't have to be out of pocket there. Um, so that's all the immediate stuff. You can't do any of the legal stuff until the death certificate arrives generally. Um, so at our firm generally, we also don't take an appointment for someone for you know, the family of a deceased person until the death certificate's arrived because there's not much point. We can't get started until we have a proper proof of death. So once the death certificate arrives, that triggers phase two, I suppose, of the, the new people who need to be advised of the death. Um, so prior to this, you didn't really have to tell all the banks. Um, you didn't have to tell service providers. Once the death certificate arrives, that's when we contact the banks, we contact the super funds, 
um, we contact the private health care and get a refund. We contact Vic Roads and we start um, gathering some of the information that's needed. Now on our website, we do have a checklist that's downloadable. Um, so who to notify checklist, okay? So the link to download this is on a lot of our blogs that's about this topic. So that's generally where you can find it. So who to notify? The ATO, now again, they're not, they don't have to be immediately notified. They're sort of in the third wave. And I'll go through this with people if they come in to see me. Banks and credit unions, second wave. Centrelink's generally already knows in the first wave. Um, clubs and other memberships, yes, in the second wave. Credit cards in the second wave. The Electoral Commission in the second wave. Employers probably already know but haven't had official um, requests for information until the death certificate comes, so we do that then. Um, if there's a foreign pension, we have to notify that authority, so that stops. That's in the second wave. Um, your funeral insurance, if you pay for that upfront, sometimes the funeral insurance comes in later, but some insurance, funeral insurance policies will pay out pretty quickly. So it just depends on how you want to manage that. Um, private health benefits, I've already said. Insurance companies, now that's not a rush either. So if there's real estate, just leave the current insurance policy in place. There's no much there's not much point in changing the insured until you have um, actually got that house or the real estate into the name of the estate. Same thing with council and water. Generally, we just leave those. They're gonna be third wave, okay? So once probate's granted and we've actually put the real estate into the estate, then um, council, water and insurance can all be notified at that point. Um, post office, you might want to do that fairly early on to get redirections. Um, other professional registrations, now they're probably not urgent as things gradually come in in the mail because um, they might not, you might not readily know what a deceased person has memberships for or subscriptions to. So as they gradually come in over a couple of months, you can gradually deal with those. There's not much urgency. Um, phone and utilities, we generally do in the second wave, but that depends on what you want to do with the real estate. So if someone's still living there, then it can be changed to the person who is living there. If no one's gonna be living there, you need to think about whether you wanna keep things connected or not. Maybe you do if you wanna be able to sell it. So all these things can be worked out at the second phase. So again, it's not urgent to be done within the first couple of weeks of someone passing away. And Vic Roads as well. So that's done in the second wave. Um, now firearms are slightly different. If they're still secured, then it's not an urgent thing when someone passes away. It's generally done in the second wave as well. The police need to be informed. Um, if they're secured and someone in the family has a license, they can generally stay there. If not, they either have to be given to the firearms officer at your police station for them just to hold in the interim, or they can go to another, um, you know, one of these shops that um, trades in weapons and it can be kept there so long as um, it's known where those are. So that's generally the crux of it, of who needs to be told and when, um, but like I said, a lot of people get overwhelmed when someone passes away and thinks that a lot of things need to be done straight away. Um, no, it's quite reasonable to take your four to six weeks of the grieving period and just be with your family um, until the death certificate arrives and you don't have to go running around trying to have everything organised within the first six weeks. Um, because things do take time and um, there's no huge urgency for most of these things. So I hope that helps. Those are the people and organisations that you need to notify when someone passes away. Um, like I said, if you want to download that no Who to Notify checklist yourself, you're quite welcome to from our website. If you have any other questions, of course, um, you can find my email or our general admin email on the website as well, or you can direct message us right here through Facebook. So I'm going to sign off again for another Monday. 
Um, I'll be back next Monday um, with another short snippet of legal information for you.